Hey folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. The weather's starting to turn nice. It's starting to get to be springtime. I was able to break out the shorts. Uh, it means we're down working in the garage a lot more on things, uh, which hopefully means uh, stuff will start going a lot faster here on the Green Iron TV channel as we uh, continue to work more and more uh, on the military vehicles. But for today, I want to go over something for you that uh, I see people question quite a bit online and uh, in the uh, message forums, in the chat groups, stuff like that. And that is the pioneering tools for the, uh, you know, the military vehicles. So what are pioneering tools? Uh, where do they go? How do they fit? What's their purpose? So uh, we're gonna go over that next here on Green Iron TV. So like always, give us a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And please make sure you go down, check out the link down below for the uh, Green Iron TV merchandise. Uh, we have all the cool stuff. We have t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. So check that out and thanks a lot. Okay, so one of the biggest things that we hear about online all the time is the shovel. Uh, the shovel is probably uh, the one that gives most people uh, the most confusion and the most difficulty so the big thing you want is you want to know you want what's known as a d-handled shovel and it's got to be of a certain length so uh, you know the military ones are a little bit shorter than what you can buy at uh, you know your regular you know hardware stores and stuff like that so you know in a pinch you can get a hardware store one um, like this so this this was one of the first ones I had when I first got the truck. Um, and this was just a, you know, hardware store D-handled shovel. Um, I then shortened down the length for it to fit. Um, it did have a plastic handle, uh, which kind of sucks. But uh, it, uh, you know, helped fill out the truck and it helped fit real nice. Uh, once I found a proper shovel, we set this thing aside. Um, and of course, you know, this is an original style D-handled shovel. Uh, it's got the wood grip. A little bit different than the, the one that's in the truck here. So there are some variations, and a lot of it depends on the years uh, between the, uh, the vehicles and stuff like that. So this one's actually got a, a split wood handle, where this one has a metal wood handle. Um, but these two are both the same overall length, so that they fit in here on the truck. And let's... Let's see what that is. So those are both 37 inches. So, you know, that's the key right here is 37 inches. So this one here uh, actually came from underneath the hood on the M38A1. Uh, and that's where this one fits up under. So here on the sub 1.5, the shovel fits in here on the side. You got your loop and your gussets. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, what shovels are for, it's, you know, you get stuck or whatever. You have the ability to dig yourself out or, you know, if you need to build some fortifications, your ability to dig, fill some sandbags and, uh, whatnot but uh, mainly pioneering tools are you know they're for uh, self-extrication uh, of the vehicle so you know getting yourself unstuck so you know that's why the military has them on the vehicles so like i said so this is this shovel fits uh like i said these two are you can see a little bit of you can see a little bit of the difference between them between the styles um uh, like i said with the wood wood handle versus the metal D handle. And of course this one's got a little bit different spade to it. But uh, both military style shovels from way back in the day. So, so like I said, those go on the vehicle. Um, and of course they get strapped in. 
and uh, all our straps on this 715 these all came from our great friends Dave and Donna over at Weeby Webbing uh, they make excellent stuff uh, I get all my all my webbing needs and a lot of all my canvas needs from those guys so big shout out to those guys so if you need any of that stuff look up their website webbing.com. I'll throw a link down below for you but uh, we'll show you I'll uh, we'll move in and I'll give you some close-ups on how to tie the shovel in here on the 715. Okay, so we got our strap here running through this lower footman loop. And you're going to go up and through the D of the shovel and then through this footman loop. All right. Around the back. And pretty simple with this with, with this one. Uh, you're just gonna then hook your strap. Pull it nice and tight and that'll hold the shovel in. So I always then like to take the extra, run it back down through the through the hasp a little bit there. And then tuck this in. And that, that helps keep it from flapping and uh, making an annoyance. Okay, here on the other side of the M715, we have some of the more basic tools. These are uh, fairly easy to find, and it's fairly easy to actually find these uh, in your standard hardware store, so you don't have to look too terribly hard uh, so we have your standard axe and Maddox. So the big thing to watch for, especially with the Maddox, is uh, you want wood handles. Of course, wood handles on both of them. Uh, but with the Maddox, you want a pick end and the broad end. Um, and of course, the way this fits in here, broad end goes down, pick end up, and uh, you get the one single strap there holding it. And of course you do have two straps holding your Maddox handle and shovel, or I mean axe handle. And then the second strap at the back. So, so like I said, pretty well just your basic, just your basic axe, nothing special. Standard curved handle, and uh, you know this one's of course been painted green. I did find this one at the local hardware store, so this one was nothing special. Uh, stick that one back in the holder there. Um, like I said, the Maddox handle is is all wood, so uh, you know that's the big key um, is having the wood handles on the stuff. So we'll strap those back in. So here on the rear, we go through the upper, over, through the footman loop, over, through the footman loop, and then back up to the buckle. And like I said, once again, we'll tear those off. And then here at the top one, same thing, except we're going from the bottom, bottom footman loop through the middle, over, and through the footman loop at the top, and then of course back down, tighten up, and tie it off. So, you know, the nice thing with the M715 is you do have, you know, your pioneering tools readily accessible right here on the sides of the vehicle. So makes it nice and easy. Makes it uh, a convenient place to store them and uh, makes them, uh, it really makes the vehicle look nice uh, when they're on display on the vehicle. So, and of course here on the M38, shovel goes underneath the hood. That's what the brackets are for. So unlike the 715, 
which has the spade fit out like that. On this, the spade fits under the hook, and then you're going to strap it. Yeah. We're going to put our strap over it. Yeah. Hold it there until a second until I can get around there. Try not to trip over the cameras. All right. So. We're going to go up and over the handle and then tighten it. Now, one of the important things here on the uh, Jeep is the tail. So you don't want that just flopping around where it can get sucked into the fan or, or the belts or pulleys or any of that type of stuff. So we're going to make sure we tuck that up real good. Loop it around, tie it off. So we just want to make sure that it's tied off good so that there's no, no flaps hanging down to get caught in anything. Well, that's going to cover some of the basics here on the pioneering tools for military vehicles. So like I did say, you know, the M715, it is kind of a unique vehicle in that it has the spots for its pioneering tools uh, all pre-laid out on the side of the bed. Uh, kind of unique. One of the only vehicles that really kind of does that. Um, other vehicles such as like the M37, uh, you know, and even an M35 deuce and a half. Um, they use what's known as the pioneering rack and it's a big square rack that can be bolted to the vehicle um, that those three items all bolt into or strap into. Um, and it's been used for years and years. Um, you know, it's it, and that pioneering rack is still in current use. It's it's still used on the current, you know, the current five tons uh, and uh, the Humvees and all that. They all still currently use um, that exact same pioneering rack. So, uh, you know, that means that there's tool. The tools are out there. Uh, it just takes a little bit of digging, a little time, you know, searching. Um, one of the best things to do, I, I you know, I know I mention it all the times to you guys. Go out to some of the military vehicle shows and swap meets. That's some of the best place uh, to find items like that. You can usually find them fairly cheap. Um, plus, you know, you're, you can pick it up, take it home with you, and you're not worrying about shipping because that's one of the problems. You know, something long like this, uh, you know, is awkward to ship, and, and uh, you know, can cost a bunch to ship. So that makes it nice and easy. Um, you know, pick up those pieces. Uh, like I said. There are a few variations in the shovels and so forth like that. Um, you know, the big thing is, you know, the shorter length uh, to fit on the 715, uh, to fit that, uh, to fit in the rack. Um, there's, uh, you know, like I said, a handful of different styles, but the big thing you want is what's known as a D-handled shovel. Um, and of course, they can be painted all a variety of colors you know painted green to match the vehicle you can paint it uh, a different color to stand out against the vehicle um like we saw the one underneath the hood of the the m38 you know the handle and top part of it was painted red obviously that was so uh when some gi set down in the mud and stuff like that uh somebody could find it and didn't run over it so uh there those pieces are out there and uh you know, it doesn't take too hard to uh, of a search to find the pieces and put them on the vehicles, and it really just really finishes off the vehicle, gives it that good that good proper look. So, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I know this was probably just a quick one. Um, haven't really got into any real heavy work in the vehicles yet. It's this is this is the first nice weekend we've had um, all winter and all spring. Um, so, you know, there's like, 
like always, this early spring when it's getting nice, there's so many other things going on. Um, you know, I got got a big list of the honeydew items that I need to get done. And, uh, you know, there's always another event or something going on. So I'll get down to the garage, do what I can do, work on what green iron I can work on, and uh, take you guys along for the ride. So thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Remember, give us a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and uh, definitely by all means, please check out the link down below uh, for our merch store. Um, all kinds of cool stuff, green iron t-shirts, sweatshirts, um, there's vehicle t-shirts and sweatshirts, um, you know, that have like the 715, 725 ambulance, the M38A1, uh, we have the cool green iron hat, I uh, got that in three different colors, so uh, make sure you check that out. And uh, like always, enjoy. Uh, right now it is nice, and I'm going to go for a ride around the block. So have a good night.